So structure is two things, it's aggregation and pores. What makes an aggregate? Because you can have an aggregate in a sandy soil, a loamy soil or a clay soil, you can still get aggregation. So it's the biological processes associated with your particles that makes good aggregates. Soil health is the health of everything. Soil health runs right through, um, yeah, that, that's, that's what we're here for, you know. We're sunshine farmers basically and, and that's driven by the soil. So without, without that diversity and strength and resilience in the soil, um, yeah, what else? There's, there's nothing else. There's no nitrogen in minerals. So the total nitrogen is mainly held where? Organic matter. So what proportion of your nitrogen is actually soluble at any one point in every 10 minutes in the, in the soil is in that truly soluble nitrate and ammonia because this is the active end. And what I want you to do is look at your soil test, find your total nitrogen and your available nitrogen. NQ Dry Tropics has partnered with Chirrup in the southern end of our region. The purpose of the project is to engage with graziers and croppers who are interested in their soil health. We're trying to help them to understand the importance of their soil, building resilience, productivity and profitability of their farming businesses. We basically want to engage with our landscape to be able to grow fantastic beef, have it working with us, for us to work with the landscape instead of working against it. Soils are one of the most important assets in your, in your grazing business. After the people, they're the second most important asset. Certainly moisture is really important, but it comes and goes on the weather. So the soil's there 100% of the times. So I like to get the guys thinking about the fact their soil's an asset and they need to look after that asset. So we just start exploring what that means. The chemistry, the biology and the physical part of their soil asset. How can they keep it in good condition? The people that we are lucky enough to work with, we can see that they can understand and are starting to see the benefits that come from managing a grazing business or a cropping business with more of a holistic approach. So looking at not just the plant health but the soil health and how that impacts the plant and therefore the quality of water that is available to be used and then how that affects quality of the beef that they produce. It has a run on effect and it starts with soil health. We have over seven different soil types on our property, so obviously fencing to land type is, is a challenge and it's probably not a financial, um, financially sensible thing to look at doing, but by being able to have the capacity to monitor what's going on in the soil and what's going on in the, in the plants and then being able to transfer that to what's going on with the livestock as well, I think that's going to help us to build a big, the big picture of what our grazing strategy, what changes the grazing strategies that we're using is going to make to the landscape and how we can make that benefit our soils to start with and then working that through the system. So transferring to the plants, to the quality of our water and to our business as a whole and on a financial level. I think everyone wants their soil to perform better because it's so important to their farm business and, and the government and all the rest of us, the wider community, want healthy landscapes for the reef and for, you know, just landscape health. So everyone wants the same thing, really. Um, and I guess the challenge is it's often a case-by-case case and farm-by-farm farm sort of approach that you've got to take. So one size doesn't fit all and it's really helping the guys think through what's appropriate for their place, whether they're in grazing or cropping or irrigation or sugarcane, what's the appropriate set of approaches for their place, and then they can come up with a plan of action.